Hello, my name is Howard Penrose. I'm the president of MotorDoc LLC. We're going to discuss electrical signature analysis for doubly fed inverter generators and induction generators and related powertrain, which was first presented at the American Wind Energy Conference in May of 2016. Presently, MotorDoc LLC has a patent pending for industrial, commercial, utility, and wind generation for electrical signature analysis. It's a patent pending. The key is data collection. Now, there's some uh, wind generators where you cannot collect the data from the base of the tower. Uh, those are the ones that have uh, transformers at the top of the tower. There are solutions in which you can drop down um, uh, cables uh, with the uh, CTs and PTs attached. Now, it's very important that you remember CTs and PTs have to be dropped down. Certain uh, systems also have uh, CTs and PTs at the base of the tower, such as the one on the right. It's a 12.4 kV uh, wind generator, and we are taking data, in this case, off of uh, the CTs and PTs in the cabinet. Again, there are plugs available such that you can access the data externally to the tower. Those would have to be permanently mounted. Now, we have reviewed uh, how people have been attempting to do wind generation for some time. Uh, right now, the only testing technology capable of testing properly wind generation and generators in general is the all test technology. By the end of the year, there will be a motor site technology that is also capable of continuous monitoring of generators. The secret to electrical signature analysis for generators is that most people forget that a generator does not use current. So they go in and they attempt to do current signature analysis, which is the incorrect methodology for doing generator testing. Instead, generators produce voltage. As a result, you need to do voltage signature analysis, and that is the basis for the uh, patent application. For doing all of the analysis, all you need are things such as your bearing information and to calculate the different speeds uh, for different components within the system, such as in the case of a wind generator, the gearbox, uh, the gears, etc., including the planetary gear, different components within the planetary gear can be detected, and we have gone so far as being able to detect problems out in the main bearings on a wind generator. You take this uh, calculation and then you can start performing an analysis utilizing voltage uh, as your signature. You notice that some of the, the uh, spikes have uh, wide bases. We'll cover that in a few minutes. Um, and then the rest of the peaks that you see here are what we're evaluating. It does not matter whether the peaks are on the left or right on the signature uh, of the line frequency, just that you're able to uh, see whatever the highest peak is. And then also in the higher frequency range, we can take a look at bearing signatures. In this case, we're looking at signatures related to the main bearings in a uh, generator through the gearbox, back through the generator, again, in voltage signature. Now here, when I'm starting to look at those wide bases, I would pull up a waterfall plot. That waterfall plot allows me to look at why I have a wide base. What uh, other people uh, may not realize is that a wind generator is a variable speed generator. So uh, when we're looking at variations in wind, we can see small changes in speed. Those uh, small changes in speed carry all the way back to the generator, uh, which we are taking a look at what's going on in the air gap. Here is one of the key uh, factors that can be done using the all test equipment that we use for data collection right now. Again, as I mentioned, the only uh, full time data logger that will be able to do this will be a motor site data logger, which will be available um, towards the end of this year. This uh, system here, uh, looking at the torque ripple at the bottom, is about uh, 10 foot pounds of small variations. 
This one here, you can see across the top, the RMS, vol the RMS voltage um, has some type of pulsing. Uh, it was also audible, so we kind of had a feeling it was rubbing. But in any case, and I also see wide bases uh, on either side of the line frequency. That would have me look closely at the possibility of something rubbing by identifying where those peaks are by looking at the waterfall plot. Uh, and a uh, high voltage uh, signature, I can determine where that rubbing is. Another thing that I can detect uh, in uh, wind generators, which is a significant problem, is things including loose or missing wedges and or moving coils. Uh, if you refer back to the article I wrote in Wind Power Magazine uh, earlier um, in 2015, you'll know that I discussed that the, mo the uh, failure modes for a lot of wind generators that occurred between that 2007 and 2010 time period where the generators built then are due to the fact that the coils were mounted loosely in the stators, breaking free and then knocking out the, um, the wedges. Now we have successfully assisted companies in replacing wedges and generators and as a result recovering the use of those generators for a period of time. Again, waterfall plot of the same system. If I'm looking down at that lower frequency where I had those wide bases, I can see those peaks. I can focus in on any of those peaks uh, using uh, software and identify where the frequencies really lie at that particular speed so that I can determine what component is rubbing. Finally, uh, again, knowing the gears, uh, including all of the different components within the gears, and the bearings, I can then calculate the different frequencies just by using the speed uh, from the machine. Also, if I have the uh, slots or rotor bars, if it's an induction machine, um, and uh, stator slots, I can calculate uh, virtually anything from the machine. This is an induction generator. You'll notice in voltage I have a floating um, ground floor in the middle part of that signature. Uh, right about here, and uh, that uh, is the direct result of the generator and the controls not being grounded properly. The signatures on the bottom, those directly relate to issues having to do with the gears in the gearbox. And then also in this case, I've got some static eccentricity in the stator. That means the rotor is off-center and also coil looseness. Again, you'll notice that the voltage is floating a little high. That is a direct result of that uh, grounding issue. And then again, I can take a look at uh, the waterfall plot and be able to identify different components. Now, all of the different uh, analysis I was doing in the back, any fast Fourier transform uh, or amplitude versus frequency, I can also look at the Z, which is time, and take a look at each point uh, in order to see exactly what's causing the issue. And then of course in this case again torque ripple. Um, this is driven by the issue with the ground and in this case I have a hundred foot-pounds of torque at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 18 hertz and uh, that I would be able to see the low frequency data. There's a lot to this technology. There's a lot to the capabilities of this technology, in particular in testing uh, wind generation uh, and as well as generators in general. For more questions, please contact me directly at hpenrose at motordoc.com. Again, that's hpenrose at motordoc.com. If you have any questions, please email me, and I tend to respond within 24 hours. Thank you very much.